Hi, I'm Ethan Kwan, and welcome to part 7, I'm pretty sure, of this series. I'm pretty sure I said 7 last time. That was a mistake. Um, that was episode 6. This is episode 7. Welcome to part to part 7 of how to make a scrolling platformer in Scratch. Now, I forgot to do this, but this is a good practice to do. Always save a backup of your project, so what I, that's what I'm going to do now. Just call this episode ep. 7, right? Because this is episode 7, so I'm just gonna go ahead and save this to my computer so that I know, so I can back it up just in case I make a mistake or something that ruins it. It's just a good practice to do every once in a while, just in case something happens, right? Okay, so today we're gonna be looking at wall jumping. Now, wall jumping is a bit more interesting. It's actually pretty easy to add, um, so this is probably gonna be a pretty short video. So, um... Okay, so the easy, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go into the change player X by DX script. So right here we have this change Y by minus eight, right? So why did we add this again? Well, that was because of the slope detection. So what we're gonna do is for wall, for wall jumping, what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna uh, we want to be able to jump on walls, and if we're holding down two keys, right, we're going to be able to jump up this wall. So let's go ahead and grab a, since this is inside the change x by dx, we're going to be using the dx variable, and we're going to be adding, we're going to be using this for um, left and right movement, right? So if we're moving left or right, and we also press the up arrow key, and we're against the wall, we want a wall jump. So we're going to go ahead and go to sensing, grab a key. Uh, up arrow pressed, or whatever key you use. I, I use up arrow. Whatever key you use to jump, just put it in here. Um, if key up arrow pressed, then, right? And let's say if, um, let's say which way are we moving, right? So if we're moving to the left, uh, we want to wall jump like this, and like, if we're wall jumping to the left, right? We're gonna want to move to the top, uh, top left, right? If we're, sorry, if we're going to the right and we're wall jumping, we want to move to the top left. If we're moving to the, if we're moving right, we want to wall jump to the top right. That didn't make any sense because I got my left and right wrong. But anyway, um, we want to check which direction we're facing. So we're going to need an if, if else, sorry, and we're going to need a greater than. So if our speed x is greater than uh, zero, meaning we are going to the right, Right? If we're going to the right, we want to set our dx, right? Set our dx, our speed x, to negative 16. Or something, something like that. Let's, uh, for now, of negative 10, right? Uh, set dx to negative 10. And uh, if we're wall jumping to the right, we're gonna set, set dx to positive 10, right? That makes sense, I think. Okay, and. Make sure to set in air to zero, right? So if we're wall jumping, we're gonna make sure that our we're sorry. We're gonna make sure that our floating variable is zero. So floating equal to zero. I'm used to calling it in air. I might have made a few more mistakes like that in my previous videos. Um, anyway, um, um, so. Uh, so let's go ahead and set speed x to zero. Um, and okay, so let's so now we want to make sure that we are not in the air. So we're gonna go ahead and set floating to zero right here. And if we're not if we're not wall jumping, we're just gonna set dx to zero. That's pretty easy. That's pretty simple. We're gonna stick this inside our change y by underneath our change y by minus eight right here. Okay, let's test that out. Yeah. Okay, that actually was really easy because now actually let's add a bigger wall. So inside level one, let's go ahead and extend this wall up so we can wall jump on it. Yeah. Okay, that was great. Oops. Um. Something happened. Um. Yeah. So now we can. Okay, I think I fixed it. Okay, so we just need to check to see how fast our player is going, right? And we don't want our player to fall so fast, right? So we want a terminal velocity, kind of like on Earth. Uh, you can only fall about like 50 meters per second before air resistance slows you down. So, um, 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna go ahead and grab an if else. Uh, sorry, just an if, and we're gonna need even less than. So if speed y or dy is less than negative 22, right? Or negative 20, let's say. If speed y is less than negative 20, we're just gonna we're not gonna do this, right? So we're just gonna set uh, speed y to set dy to negative 20, right? That's pretty simple, right? Um, actually, instead of doing this, we're gonna actually swap these around. So if um, if speed y if dy is greater than negative 20, change dy by negative 2, like this. Now, that should probably fix it, let's just check. Yeah, okay, so now there's a maximum velocity at which you can fall, so that's good. That probably fix that, that fixes our issue, just make sure to not have too thin platforms, okay? And with that, that is the end of this series, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the series. Uh, it, it really helped me a lot, and I, I like, it, it helped me learn a bunch of things about Scratch, and, like, platformers in general, so I think it really helped me with my games, I think it'll really help, I hope, I hope that, that experience was for, for you, too, um, but that's it for now. Okay, so thank you for watching, I hope you liked this video, if you did, please subscribe, like, and share this channel with others, and if you didn't, eh. Um, I hope you like this video. See you at how to how to do stuff See you in the next tutorial, and see you next time. Bye.